day, everybody. This is Casey from Sovereign Homestead Design and Honey Badger Nursery here in Sequatchie Valley, Tennessee. We're just wrapping up a biochar burn using our cone pit. First time using this type of method. And we just burned up a bunch of tree trimmings, fallen limbs, stuff like that. Stuff that would normally just go to waste when people burn it in an open pile and walk away. But we tended it and we got probably a yard of good charcoal here that we're going to turn into biochar to become a main component in our potting soils here at the nursery where we're growing livestock fodder trees and other crops for perennial agroforestry systems. So stick around to check out this low tech, really simple but effective method for taking what's normally a waste resource and turning it into something valuable, a millennium long soil amendment that's gonna last for generations. Stick around, check it out. All right, here's the pit before we start. We got our paper fuels, a little bit of a heat wall, just with some extra cinder blocks lying around. Shovel should give you an idea of scale of the pit. It's a little hard to see, but you can get an idea roughly of how big that is. It'll be easier once it's full of burning stuff to get an idea of the size, but it's a decent sized pit. Got all our fuels over here, stacked and sorted. We got some old lumber, a lot of trim, a lot of slash, a lot of fallen branches, some bigger stuff that we'll throw in once the fire's going, a little bit of odds and ends. So that's our fuel base. We're gonna build the fire next, get it going, and start feeding this. We've got our extra water reserve here that'll help with quenching, or quenching. Uh, we've got a couple five gallon buckets so we can get a lot of water on it quick. Of course, we've got the hose for doing the initial quench. Okay, the beacons of Minas Tirith are lit. Now we're just gonna wait for it to get going a bit and then we'll start layering on uh, additional layers of fuel and once each one chars or we start to see that ash layer just beginning to form then we'll add more wood and that's how we're gonna basically bake whatever's down here at the bottom we're gonna deprive it of oxygen because oxygen's coming in the top it's getting consumed by the flame but we still got the heat that's gonna bake any carbonaceous material down there get it to release its volatiles they're gonna rise up and get consumed in the fire so once it gets going we should have a pretty clean burn if we're doing well the wood's a little wet today so it might be a bit bit recalcitrant to get going but uh we'll update as the burn continues okay we've got a good mass of caught fuel now it's burning well and aggressively just layered on a little bit more some slightly larger stuff and once that gets good and burning um, then we'll start looking at adding more layers more consistently but this will be at the base of our fire and thank goodness for that little heat wall because it is getting hot Fire's good and kicking now. Added a bunch of smaller material to try and get some nice even coal bed all the way out to the sides of the pit. And we're gonna let that burn a bit, see if we can get most of it engulfed in flame. We'll work around the edges with the shovel, knock things back in that don't get fully consumed. And then once we got a good even bed, we can start adding on some of these larger diameter fuels. And then it'll really be on. Sure glad we have these cinder blocks because it makes a huge difference to stand behind these versus being just right there on the side of the pit. All right, updating a few. This is a good example of when we start to work around the outside and push in any unburnt material or add a new layer. If I can get close enough here, you can just start to see the white ash forming up over the dark charred remains of that piece of wood. Same for most everything around the perimeter here. So that indicates that we're getting good charring and we're probably about ready to add the next layer of fuel. There's another fresh arm load of Material added, still early in the burn. The stuff's starting to catch up there on top. Once that gets good and consumed, we'll do it again. We're now adding rounds of the larger material over there, smaller diameter, or larger diameter, up to three inches, four inches is probably the biggest, most of the two to three stuff. So we're doing a little bit more of a, a higher stack, and then sometimes I'll go back and I'll lay, just like you're making a teepee fire, logs up in the center just to get the whole thing going, and then knock it back down. So this is the third round of larger stuff. We've probably got three more to go and we'll keep knocking those down and we'll finish with a round of lighter stuff here just to make sure everything's good and charred on the top, stuff that burns quick, and then we'll quench it. Okay folks, we're getting down to it. That's the last of the large fuel. We've got two smaller piles of thinner stuff. Probably do that slightly larger stuff next once this is burned down a little bit. In about a couple more minutes here, I'm gonna go around and kick in some of these bones, these little bits that are unburnt, uncarbonized around the outside. But you can see we're starting to get a little bit of ash progression into the center and good amount of charring in there. So in about two more minutes, we'll go around, fix the pile, get anything that's not charring into the center 
let that burn a few more minutes and then we'll start with our final two additions of the smaller stuff just to give it a good cap make sure everything chars nice and quick and then we'll be ready to quench okay last arm load of fuel coming up look at that spread over the top we just kicked in the unburnt ends thing is really hot right now that, uh, we'll get the small fuel burned down in a sec and then we'll be ready to quench this thing all right there we have it the last layer added it's going off it's going to burn down real quick we'll get the edges topped in and as soon as that pile gets coated with white we will quench it all right the final arm load is burned down a couple burnt ends will chop in but you can see we got a good light white ashing covering the whole pile so it means that Everything's pretty much ready to be quenched. Uh, we'll check it again in a couple minutes right before we do it, but this is about it. Okay, final step. We're gonna quench the pile now. I'm gonna hit it with the hose at first, and then we're gonna do a bunch of bucket shuttles to get a bunch of water on it fast. So it's gonna be a big geyser of steam, and we'll get this thing out, and then we'll take a look at the material, how we did in terms of its quality once things have cooled down a little bit. So here we go. material looks good. It's all broken down to a relatively small size. And Sammy, can I have you come closer and hold the hose? Oh, <laughs> oh goody. She doesn't want to get close to the flames, everybody. But um, It's just, pretty hot. She can do this from a distance. It's good. I'm going to add some water from the buckets here. It always takes a surprising amount of water to quench these char piles. A lot of material in here. Okay, so we're gonna examine the quality of the char now. We're getting just the final soak done here, but everything's mostly extinguished. Still a little bit of residual heat in there. Quality looks pretty decent. We didn't have too many bones, so decent sized piece, and it just breaks nice and easily. Crumbles right in your hands, which is good. You smell it, it doesn't smell super smoky or very tarry, which is good. It means that most of the volatiles have burned off. And when it dries, we'll do a drop test, but it should sound when I drop it like this, like clinkling glass, uh, breaking glass. So the fact that things are gonna break, like this piece, not quite done, that's a bone. Didn't quite get finished, but this stuff is all good. That one's a little bit undercharred, but most of this is gonna be pretty darn finished material so we'll let it dry after we've fully quenched it and then we'll crush it in the driveway underneath the car's tires and this is going to become uh, one of the main constituents of our potting soil here at Honey Badger Nursery in season one. Okay folks we're out here at the end of the day now the sun is hidden behind this walnut tree thank goodness. Take a look at the material now the pile's much more cooled off there's still a little residual heat down in there but no signs of um, continued combustion just to get a good up close look at the material, all right? Got good charcoal, all of it crushes real easily in the hand. So we'll put that in the driveway underneath tarps and just as we cruise in and out in the cars, they'll break that down into a good size and then we'll do some sifting. But this is all gonna become part of our potting soil mix here at the nursery and go into the air printing beds and different air pots for the livestock fodder trees and other hardy perennial trees and plants for productive permaculture landscapes. So there you have it, cone pit. It's my first time using this method. I really liked it. I think I'd like to build a more extended wall around it and or it might be nice someday to get a, an above ground like ring of fire type kiln. But for low tech method, this works pretty darn good. This was actually the old trash pit where the prior resident of this house was just literally burning trash. 
So we dug out and removed all the trash, all the funky toxic stuff, and it feels good to be building soil in this spot now and healing a wound in the landscape. So more to come as we mix potting soil here at Honey Badger Nursery. But hope you enjoyed the cone pit video and get out there and make some biochar. Take care.